Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm probably off out in a minute, but um, it suddenly dawned on me. I was um, just going over comments and things that um, I never got round to this follow-up video, which I'm going to do now. This is the Maxillaria arachnity flora, I think. It's actually got another bud coming. Yee. I thought it would finished blooming for this year, but it may have a virus. So what I did in a video a while ago, I'll, I'll put that video name in the description because I can't remember at the moment, even though it's actually sitting on the computer screen not right now. And the idea was to set the plant up in a position that I could repeat. Yeah? And it is basically based on that hook facing directly away from me and this very large leaf pointing towards me. So I've set the plant up in the same position so that I could refilm the questionable leaves and get the same leaves again rather than picking on any new ones. Um, I even drew a little diagram to point out the leaves in question that were singled out last time round. So um, it started with these three relatively new leaves that were spotty. Well they still are and quite honestly, it, it's difficult to tell whether they've got any worse. They, they're never going to get better, obviously. Um, so included in this video is a watch. The way this plant grows is it pushes up one quite large leaf, followed by a smaller one. So these are new growths, these three leaves, the three I picked on last time. Yeah? And... Um, they are now pushing up their second leaf. Yeah, you can see it's set a little bit behind. And this one down here. Yeah? So what I'm going to do now is, okay, we benchmark these three leaves again. Let's see if I can get nice and close. Nice fixed position. So that's the sort of amount of spotting on that leaf. And then we'll do that one as well. That's the amount of spotting on that leaf and the more difficult one. That one has got spotting and a few sort of little black dots as well. But the three new leaves on those three new growths that are all heading in the same direction so are easy for me to pick up on again haven't fully extended and opened yet so I can come back to those. And then um, the other leaf we picked on was this one sticking straight up, straight up behind the hook. So again, I'll twist round and we'll sort of stop on that. And looking at the previous video, that leaf hasn't changed because it had a very thick row of spots on what is the top of the leaf, looking at it as we are now. And the other half, well, two thirds of that half of the leaf was clean. Well, it still is. And then the other half of the leaf, the lower section as we look at it now, so that would be the right hand side of the leaf if it was vertical, like that, was covered in spots except for the out outside edge. Well it still is. So that leaf hasn't actually got any worse. And I mean there were some other leaves involved in that video but those were the ones I picked on deliberately to be able to come back to them. And then we had a look at this older leaf down here that had um, quite a few of the black dots on it. But that is an old leaf. That's probably one that I, you know, I had that leaf when I got the plant. I haven't had the plant a huge amount of time. So um, those are the leaves I want to watch. Um, but what I ought to do now is try and find a clean leaf that we can find again and see if it's... <coughs> yeah, it's difficult to tell really because quite a few of them are older leaves and a virus would generally tend to attack the younger, newer growth first because it's the weaker, you know, it's the, it's the softer, the easier to get at, I suppose. Um, I suppose one I could pick on is... Uh, because even if the bud falls, the stalk of the bud will still be there next time I film. So, yeah, yeah, to the right of the hook, when it's facing away, and the leaf sti sticking straight upright to the right of the bloom, that's a pretty clean leaf. There's some very, very faint shadows on it, but it's not a bad leaf. So we can come back to that one as an example of one 
that doesn't look bad at all. So if that one goes downhill fast, yeah, then we're on to something here. Now I still think it may have the ring spot virus. It could be the fleck virus. It could be some thing that's not even named, I don't know. But there are leaves on there that don't look right, yeah? They should all be nice, clean, bright green leaves. So we'll have another look in, I don't know, say 10 days time at the secondary leaves from those three new growths and see if they've come up clean. See if they're nice and uh, unflecked, shall we say. The other thing I'm gonna do as a precaution is actually give that a spray with the bug spray and the reason for that is somewhere lurking in there that it's remotely possible there could be some spider mite that are getting at the leaves before they open but that's not the spider mite way they like to infest undersides of leaves you know that's where they'd be and you know there are a couple of little white dots on there so I'm going to get the white no, the old magnifying glass out and just double check but I think if I give it a bug spray if 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 there are if there is a few and it will only be a few spider mites because every now and again on my plants I do see some little white dots but they're white so they're certainly not the true spider mites the reddy orangey ones because they're quite easy to tell if you think you've got them all you've got to do is run your finger over the leaf on the underside and look at your thumb and if you've got an orangey stain that looks a bit like rust you got spider mites <laughs> whether you can see them or not <laughs> so it's quite an easy test um, there'd obviously have to be a few of them for you to squash and get the stain on your thumb but it doesn't take many it really doesn't. You don't need a complete infestation to get that markings on your thumb when you run up the leaf. But they tend to head for the undersides. So I'll give it a bug spray. That won't be today because I've got to mix some up. My ready mix stuff is old now. And because there's only a little bit left in the bottom of the container, it's had an, an awful lot of air around it, if you know what I mean. I don't believe it's viable anymore. But the stuff I mix up myself is always fresh and at the appropriate strength, it really works and it's systemic, it gets in there. Take a bite out of them plants, you die, mate. But I don't believe I've got spider mites on this. There's no scale. Um, scale are virtually eradicated now. And these leaves underneath are just too clean. They're just too clean. So I don't believe it's spider mites. Um, anyway, that's the plant as it is now. Um, set up in the same position as it was on the previous video. Leaf one, leaf two, leaf three. Yeah? And then the one up the back, leaf four. And then we looked at that one and we looked at that one. Yeah, so they're quite easy to find on the plant. But as an example, that's a pretty clean leaf. And in fact, that good leaf that we're looking at behind the bud, this is the other leaf from that growth. It's very, very slight shadowing there, directly under my finger, but it is just nothing more than a shadow. So I'm beginning to wonder, this was up in the roof this was in an incredibly high light position and now it isn't because I don't want it touching anything else it lives down there on its own literally so it doesn't touch anything else gets watered separately and everything I'm just wondering whether it's just a bad reaction to far too much light too much light does cell damage and um, in, it, in a full scale light burn you know that's normally combined with heat but the, the, the effect is a, is a is a horrible yellow patch that turns brown eventually but if it was only just a bit too much light you could be looking at almost minute cell damage to the most sensitive parts of the plant and that would be the new growths sticking out the top of the plant like that those were virtually touching the roof 
So maybe it's just light. But I'll carry on with the precautions and we'll come back and visit this in about, say, a week to ten days' time, when I remember. But it's a single plant video this time. The last time I videoed this, it was muddled up with other things and it's just taken me about 20 minutes to find it. You know, I knew roughly how long ago it was. I had to just go through each video till I found the clip. Anyway, we'll come back to it. I don't really want to lose it, but um, I also don't want this getting hold of any other plants. You know, it's bad enough with the Fusarium, but at least I can do something about that and try and at least stem the flow, if you know what I mean. But um, you can't stem the flow of a virus. You can stop it possibly getting to other plants by isolation. Um, you know, your sort of uh, routines that you do if you think you've got a problem with a plant. But um, once the plant's actually got it, it's got it and it's, it's doomed. Long term, it's going to die. It's, it's not going to fight through it, it's just not. It's just going to go. Um, so we'll see how we get on with this one. It'd be a shame to lose it, it's a nice mature plant. Okay, we'll come back to it later then. Bye for now.